Uh, I'm Herb Kozlov. I am a partner in the New York office of Reed Smith, a global law firm. As I said a moment ago, we are a large global law firm. We have a fintech practice that I describe as cutting diagonally through the firm. And what I mean by that is in order to deliver proper fintech representation to clients, you need to have expertise in regulatory matters in the US, CFTC, SEC, uh, banking law, and at least 48 of the 50 US states have some overlay that can fit some of these uh, transactions. You need to have transactional experience, IP, data privacy, and on and on. And we have that kind of expertise through the firm in the US. We can do the same in, in Europe, in London, in Germany, throughout the EU, in Singapore, in Hong Kong. So our FinTech practice cuts across all of those diagonals. The finance function today uh, is moving in many different directions. The, the blockchain solution can really revolutionize so many aspects, whether it's data entry, data capture, uh, in particular things like smart contracts, the ability to track logistics, supply chain. Uh, blockchain impacts all of that. And creates really instantaneous or virtually instantaneous uh, recording and, uh, of a transaction. Most importantly, because blockchain, another phrase, is distributed across multiple platform, there isn't a single point of failure. It enhances data privacy, it makes your data more secure, and it makes it more accessible. A number. First of all, there's an educational aspect to it. Blockchain technology is a relatively new uh, invention, first coming out of the cryptocurrency world and going far past that. Uh, blockchain, as applied to financial services, has some similarities to the cryptocurrency universe, but takes a core technology and dramatically expands on it. I think test is the right word. Uh, what we are seeing is uh, companies asking for demonstrations, asking for uh, to be educated by providers, determining what best of breed is. What we also see, and, and the providers in this space, whether it's smart contracts or automating things like bills of lading, all of this is happening. What we're seeing is that the smart consumers will go to the best technology providers and ask for demonstrations and really kick the tires. And because it's an emerging technology, the providers are more than willing to come and demonstrate and teach and learn. What we're also seeing is adoption of this technology in a redundant manner so that finance teams, banks, users of this technology are setting up a side-by-side -side system to their legacy so they don't have to throw a switch today and take the risk that it wasn't fully understood and it failed. And, and that's one of the ways we go about implementing a switch over to a blockchain technology by doing it slowly, baby steps at first until there's buy-in within the industry, buy-in within the user, and great familiarity and comfort with it. And when we talk about blockchain in this concept, we have to distinguish between a public blockchain, which is widely accessible, and a permissioned blockchain, where the only users of, and the only people who can make entries on the ledger, which is what a blockchain is, are specifically permissioned, which really creates the security you need and the comfort you need that this is private. A lot of fintech is really reliant on blockchain. We are seeing things like exchange, trading exchanges for various classes of security. The ability to, and for example, the state of Delaware a few years ago 
passed the statute that says if you're a Delaware company, you may now maintain your stock ledger on a distributed ledger or blockchain. That's an example of where this is moving. If you think about that example of how you maintain stock records and how you transfer ownership of a security. Decades ago, it was done with paper. You had a physical stock certificate. And when you wanted to transfer it, you filled something out on the back. But now companies can, can do this on the blockchain, record it, but also there are exchanges that are emerging and have emerged, which permit you to actually execute your stock sale on a distributed ledger platform that's regulated by the Securities and Exchange Commission or whoever has supervision and bypasses a lot of the legacy and some might say archaic means of transferring ownership. If it works for securities, it works for other assets. There are already examples of large real estate transactions where the ownership of that real estate is digitized and transferred and recorded on the blockchain and fractionalized so that your fractional ownership of this real estate asset can be transferred on this platform in a digital representation. Putting aside the fintech and blockchain side, a couple things, a little bit contradictory perhaps, but first, pick something that you have passion for. Don't take a job. Find a career, a pursuit, an activity that you're interested in and you enjoy doing and you'll never work a day in your life. The most successful in any field, and the field doesn't matter, are always the people who enjoy what they're doing and have passion for it, who aren't doing it just because it's a paycheck. So number one, find something that interests you. Number two, develop expertise, become a specialist in something. Number three, don't be narrow and only be a specialist in one thing. Just broaden your horizons. If you're an engineer, uh, read literature, study art history, but expand your mind and the rest comes with it. And to quote my son who was asked this question recently, learn to play the banjo when you're young, it's harder than it looks and learn to program. Thank you.